Parish and Jackie RV10 fans, I figure now's a good time to bring you guys up to speed on the uh, progress of the project. Um, to begin with, we got the spars finished last week. We've got all of the nut plates installed, as you can see there. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, we also got, we'll come back and we'll talk about these here in just a second. We also got all the holes countersunk. There's 52,000 of them. No, just kidding. I don't know, there's something like, you know, five, six hundred, seven hundred. I lost track. Um, I also went through and as you can see here, we uh, primed all of the holes because most of these won't have anything contacting them for a while. And then like these holes here are screw holes. So they needed the primer to be reapplied where we countersunk everything out. So um, I had heard some people talk about using a Q-tip. That's the method I used. It works great for these holes. Um, the holes with the screws, it kind of got caught up a little bit in some of the countersinking there where it was a little rough around the edges. But uh, yeah, not, not too bad. So that's all taken care of now and, and, and all in. I also, you guys remember last week, maybe I talked about how the uh, previous owner of the kit, uh, we didn't, I didn't grab these on my way out, or the aileron torque tubes um, because they were in a separate location in his workshop and so we didn't know that I needed to grab these. But uh, anyway, he was able to find these and mail them to me along with a check to reimburse me for the cost of buying the torque tubes. So that was great that he did that and took care of me in that respect. And so shout out to Manny for being an awesome guy and awesome person in the pilot community and, and uh, got me taken care of. But anyway, he mailed me these and they showed up literally about an hour before I needed to uh, bolt them on. On the other side here is the tie down bar which is used, there will be a, a tie down ring that will come into the bottom here, there will be a hole in the bottom of the wing in order to, when you need to tie the airplane down to stakes or to the ramp or something like that when it's not going to be inside of a hangar. So that's what this bar is for here, it's for the tie down system or for the tie down bar and then these bolts that you see coming through here are on the opposite side for the aileron bell crank and so I don't think I explained but these are the aileron bell crank. There will be a, a tube, a pole, remember you know, I keep talking about these control linkages and stuff even when I was talking about the tail cone. So that pole will run through the big holes there, come through here, and there will be a mechanism that um, when it pushes and it pushes this direction, it will push the aileron either up or down. I have no idea which direction. We'll be figuring that out together way later on. So, um, but uh, yeah, so those showed up about an hour before I actually needed to bolt them on. It was a beautiful day, so I got the priming done. And uh, you probably can hear in the background the kids down the street screaming, so it tells you it's a beautiful day here as well. Um, after that, I got started on the ribs, and I'm doing both spars at the same time, as you guys remember. So right now, what we have is the configuration of the spars. This spar here is aircraft left. That spar over there is aircraft right. It's easier for me to keep track of, I can look at it and I can say, okay, that's gonna to be towards the left side of the airplane. Or if I come all the way around to this side and I'm standing in front of the spar and I look to the left, well, that's gonna be the left side of the airplane as well. So they're both oriented the same direction. It just makes keeping track of things so much easier. Um, and then I'm, so these ribs, and I'm doing this section kind of out of order. The first step is, is you're supposed to build the, the bell crank rib, which goes right here which has all these additional attachments to it. There's a, the bell crank support here, and then back here, they'll end up being the flap support. Um, so I'm this will be the last one that I do, but because these, I'm just kind of getting them in place. They don't take terribly long to do, but I'll show you in a second what the prep work looks like for those. But anyway, these are all uh, the correct ribs that'll be going in the correct location. Um, I think the next one I skip actually here because this one has a flap support unit that I have to attach to it and then I do a they, they get complicated as we go down here there there's modifications to the ribs these were just the standard can ribs that come out of the, the kit you straighten them up you flute them up you deburr the edges and slap them on but once we get them all on then I will number them so that way once I take them off then we'll know exactly which position they need to go back on in the future. Um, one of the interesting things that I found is the distance between this spar and or this flange and this flange versus the difference between this flange and this flange 
is about a sixteenth of an inch difference. Um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a gap down here from this tab. And then on this side, you'll notice that there's no gap. Um, I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue. I'm actually going to try to take a measurement on it and send the question into Vans and ask them, say, hey, is this really going to be an issue? Should I be concerned with this or not? Um, this side, they're just tighter, and it's not that I bent this tab different than I bent that tab, which that obviously can occur, but one of the ribs, I had accidentally put it on the wrong side, and when I moved it to this side, it was still, there was a significant difference, or not significant, about a sixteenth of an inch difference. I don't even know if it's a full sixteenth, maybe closer to a thirty-second of an inch, but there is a little bit of a difference between the flange width on these two sides, so we'll be working with that. Anyway, over here on these ribs, this is what, when they come out of the kit, this is what you see. And there's a couple of issues that I have to correct before I actually can install it and drill it and what have you. Uh, the first one, if you'll notice, it's bowed, which that isn't a huge issue because it doesn't take much downforce to be able to straighten them out. But it's also bowed this direction as well. And you can kind of see that. You can see when I push down here, you can see the rib actually flex a little bit. And the third issue is if you look at these flanges, and I don't know if the camera will even do it justice, they're not quite to a full 90 degrees. They're somewhere probably around about 80-ish degrees, maybe 82 degrees, something like that. So I have to bend them straight, and when I bend them straight, that causes that bow to become even more pronounced. And um, so I bend them straight, I then, and all four corners or all four sides get bent straight and then after that then I actually put little flutes which you'll notice on these ribs over here if you notice that there's little indentations in the tops there those are flutes that were placed into the rib to make it straighten out in this particular direction here the front to back direction it's just a matter of uh, fixing this flex line here and getting it uh, straight so those are that's pretty easy to fix but when you do that it makes the bow even more so but the flutes actually take care of that straightens it all out um, and by the time I'm finished when I lay one of these ribs on here it will lay completely perfectly flat it doesn't take much more than maybe a few ounces of pressure. It will have a little bit of a twist to it, but the twist is normal. Um, and you can't really, you can take out the twist, but it takes a whole lot of fluting and it's really easy to mess it up. So the instructions actually say to leave the twist in. Don't worry about the twist, but be concerned with the, the bow. So I get the bow out, leave the twist in, and we're good to go. And then at that point, I go ahead and deburr the edges. So that way it doesn't scratch up other stuff. And it's one less thing that I'll end up having to do later. So. Um, hopefully by, I'm, right now this week I'm working on a whole lot of tax stuff and things like that, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to come out here and work on the airplane here lately, but hopefully by next week I can have the rest of the ribs on. That's kind of my goal. And so we'll see ribs all the way down, and that'll be great. And um, Jackie likes to do what she called gooshing the ribs, so we have a little video here of her gooshing the ribs. Anyway, folks, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you guys again next week.